Howdy mates, how are we doing today? Good afternoon. Here's a part three video for Monday, December 5th, 2022. And I'm over now in the town of Ocala, which is another city that is in northern Florida. So a particular site that I'm visiting today is a place known as Fort King which was used by the United States Army in the 1800s. So, Fort King was one of the first established forts by the white man in this part of Florida. It essentially provided the establishment of Ocala. Or at least the modern aspect of it. So, this place, though, has a very large historical significance. It's actually listed as a uh, national landmark, as a matter of fact. So, it's actually recognized on a federal level. Which I'll explain in a second. Because before I get into that... I wanted to talk a little bit about the Seminole Wars. So, there's two different beliefs that historians have in regard to the Seminole Wars. Some say that there were three separate wars, whereas some say it was all one single war. But the bottom line is, of what we need to know about the Seminole Wars, was it was a combination of broken promises and tensions between the colonizers and the Seminole tribe. So, let's just say there was a lot of... Hold on a second. So let's just say it was really a matter of time before the explosion, figurative explosion, would progress even further. So, starting off, the, okay, so we go back in uh, like 1816, that's approximately when the first Seminole War began, and... Essentially, how it really started was because of Andrew Jackson, who was one of the recognized leaders of the uh, United States military at the time. So, essentially, uh, what Andrew Jackson wanted to do was expand some of the territory that the United States already had. And... He really kept a close eye on Florida, in particular. And you gotta think, this is when Florida was still under control of the Spanish government. And dominated by the Seminole. So, you figure, some of the first set of attacks were on Spanish forts which was basically in the panhandle. And uh, essentially, Andrew Jackson made orders to burn all of those fortresses that I'm mentioning. And you figure, too, the Spanish government didn't really... They only controlled so much territory. So essentially, they didn't really have as much power I should say. But due to the attacks on those forts, the Spanish basically asked for surrender. And so, the proceedings for the creation, or the, yeah, the seating for the state of Florida was established in 1821, which was then to be owned under the uh, United States government. So, we fast forward another mm, 
seven, seven, nine, seven years, give or take. And Andrew Jackson wanted to propose, or not just Andrew Jackson, but him and his um, crew, I should say. Well, I think, no, okay, pardon me. This was actually around the time Andrew Jackson got into his presidency. Yes, that's what I meant to say. Pardon me. Adding to my point, a specific treaty that was called the Treaty of Moultrie Creek, the proposal was for the Seminoles to basically give up some of their claims on the land and to basically be on a reservation more in central Florida. In exchange, the United States would supply them with uh, blacksmiths, uh, interpreters, and other ambassadors and whatnot. But the thing is, for the Seminoles' way of life, they didn't really see that to be a very fair deal. And so, as we get into, so you see my point, you're starting to see some of those tensions and conflicts adding up. So as it got into 1835, specifically on December 28th, uh, there were two simultaneous attacks, one by Chief Osceola and the other by Chief McCanopy. And one of them, led by McCanopy, was in uh, near Tampa, as a matter of fact. And he actually killed a, I, I believe it was a Brevet General. He went by the name of Mr. Dade. Can't remember his first name. But either way, he was a very major figure that was killed, massacred, along with the soldiers. And then that same exact day, where I'm at, Fort King was also attacked, too. And it was, you know, it was an unexpected attack from the Seminoles. So the soldiers and uh, another general by the name of Wiley Thompson was caught by surprise, and he was also massacred. And this essentially set the stage for... The Second Seminole War. So, really, what the Second Seminole War entailed is what I'm going to cover in my next video. So, stay tuned for it. Alright, take care.